Hey everyone, Mike from Just Watch back with another episode. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. If you are a first time visitor to this channel, thank you for stopping by and giving us a few minutes of your time. I greatly appreciate it. If you like the content, please do hit that subscribe button and also hit the like button below and leave us a comment what you think about the material. I greatly appreciate it and do enjoy interacting with you guys. That's what we're here for, for talking watches and looking at watches and all of that stuff. So please do feel free to leave a comment. All right, kind of deviating away from the normal material on this episode, I'm not gonna do like the full on white gloves under the lights review. Just wanna kind of give you guys my thoughts on wearing this Rolex 16600 Sea Dweller over the last month or so. Watch that I've greatly enjoyed wearing and I think there's a lot of positive tributes to it which we will go over. Before we do that, I do want to give you guys my wrist check. I'm continuing to wear the Janault Ocean Rover. Very much enjoying wearing this watch. It has a really nice profile. It's keeping great time. And as I said in my previous video, I really enjoy that on-the-fly adjustment on the bracelet clasp. So just real nice stuff from Janault. All right, so let's get into this 16600 Sea Dweller. So this version of Sea Dweller was made from the mid-late 1990s through the mid-late 2000s. This is the last of the Rolexes that don't have the maxi case and maxi dial as far as the sports steel watches go. So you have just your classic case shape and profile and all that stuff, which I really like. And to me, it's one of the strong points about the watch. This, you know, this is the watch if you're buying a Rolex back in the early 1960s. So 50 plus years of manufacturing, pretty much the same case. I mean, there's a reason that they don't change classics and that's because they are so well done. I mean, you think about, to me, the way I think about the, you know, the old versus the new is kind of like the new Ford Mustang versus the classic, like Shelby Cobra 1969, you know, that type of thing, the old Fastback. You know, you can definitely tell there's some lineage there, but to me, that 69 classic is still just the nicer car. Kind of the same thing here with this watch and a real strong thing as far as this one goes is with this version at least or this series is you're getting all of the new features that you want in a Rolex without having to get all of the maxi dial, maxi case, all of that stuff and best off you're saving thousands of dollars. So and spend it you can get into one of these for you know probably 68 to 7500 somewhere in there as opposed to you know a modern Samariner or 114060 or one of the you know the Samariners with date you're going to spend 7500 to probably 10 grand depending on the condition and who the retailer is not going to find one very or you're not likely to find one at your authorized dealer where you're going to get one at suggested retail the secondary market right now is very strong for Samariners and just going to have a hard time finding it. So if you want to save thousands of dollars and get all of those modern features, this is a great way of doing it. So what you're getting here on this watch, you're getting sapphire glass, which is awesome. You're getting the classic dial style without the maxi numbers, but you are still getting a great luminous material. Also white gold, you're getting the Rolex Super Luminova. Best part too, to me, is you're getting a date at the 3 o'clock without the Cyclops window. I don't know about you guys, but I just don't like a Cyclops window on a Submariner. It's just one of those things I would personally never buy a Submariner with date just because I don't like that Cyclops window, which is kind of weird because I like it on the date just, and I'm wondering if anybody else is with me on this. I don't mind it at all on either the 36 millimeter classic date just or the new 41 millimeters, the 126 series. I just don't like it on the Submariners for whatever reason. Actually, it doesn't really bother me on the GMT either. I don't know, for whatever reason, a Cyclops on a dive watch just kind of bothers me. So you're not getting the Cyclops, you are getting an aluminum bezel insert, which I personally like. To me, I like how it ages, it fades, it's gonna show marks from wear and tear as it gets older. I'm actually kind of interested to see where the secondary market on the current generation of Rolex, Submariner, and Sea Dweller goes 40, 50 years from now. You know, the ceramic bezels, which aren't going to age, and all the ways that Rolex has improved manufacturing to prevent the watch from aging. I'm kind of curious to see 
where that goes as far as what happens with the secondary market and how that's going to affect value way down the road. But I won't live to see it, so I will never know. Anyways, getting back to this one, you're getting all the same stuff. You're getting 1,220 meters of water resistance. You're getting the robust 3135 movement. This is a movement that has just improved decade after decade, vibrates along at 28,800 vibrations per hour getting the COSC certification, getting the superlative chronometer certification. And this one, you've noticed that 2003 was recently serviced, is keeping time to within two seconds a day. So you're just what you would expect from Rolex as far as that goes. You're getting solid end links, all of the good stuff that you want in modern Rolex. And definitely a very wearable watch too. I just love the way that the case tapers down to the bracelet and just the real clean aesthetic overall of the watch. I think it's really good. No drawbacks really to me at all to wearing this watch and some big pluses as far as what you're saving in cost compared to the new watch. Now, there is one minor drawback and to me, it's not really a huge issue, but some people it might be in that the Oyster bracelet on this watch is not quite as robust as they have made in the last few years. They've really perfected the Oyster bracelet in this newest generation of Samariner and Sea Dweller, you know, with the Glylock. And also the actual links just feel a little bit more robust. You're getting really nice stuff here though. You're getting, you know, chamfered underneath, so it's not gonna catch arm hairs. It's gonna give you some ventilation. Uh, all the good stuff, really nice polishing and that wonderful brushed finish that you expect from Rolex. Where the real downside is, is on the clasp. Kind of a cool thing that Rolex does here with the clasp in that they machined the clasp so that it looked like oyster bracelet links, which I think is kind of interesting. They also put the coronet on the, the Rolex coronet, of course, on the bracelet. Just the overall operation on this just isn't as nice as your modern Rolex bracelet. And of course, you're not getting that quick on the fly glide lock adjustment. You are getting the dive lock extension. So if you're wearing a wetsuit or what have you, you can actually open this up and extend it by 10 millimeters, make the watch a little bit, or make the watch fit over a wetsuit, which is a nice feature. Overall, I really enjoy wearing this watch. It wears just extremely well. It's a wonderful size at the 40 millimeters, you know, the classic Rolex size. The thickness on this, I wanted to mention too, it's a 14.8 millimeter thickness. It's a little bit thicker than a Submariner, about a millimeter and a half, I believe, off the top of my head. I haven't looked at the thickness on a Submariner for a while, so don't hold me to that if I'm wrong. But the extra thickness on this is coming from your thicker case back and also a taller crystal. Comes along with that taller crystal, of course, is a taller bezel, so you don't have the crystal sticking up as high. So it does stand up a little bit off of the center block of the monoblock uh, center case. And to me, no big deal. I actually kind of enjoy the way it looks. I think it looks kind of cool and funky and still very wearable. The 14.8 millimeters doesn't stand up too high at all off the wrist. And it doesn't look that high either because of the way that Rolex machined the center case. Nice job by Rolex. Overall on this watch, I really give it just strong grade. I have to give this watch an A. I mean, super robust, 15 years old, still keeping time to within two seconds a day. And as I said, very wearable on the wrist. And I think it's just a really strong buy right now. If anybody is on the market for a Submariner, they just don't want to shell out eight to 10 grand for one of the new ones, or you know, 10 to 15 for a Sea Dweller, depending on what you're looking at, whether it's the anniversary of the James Cameron or what have you. Definitely do look at this version, the 16600 version, you know, the mid, mid, 19, mid to late 1990s through the mid to late 2000s. Do look at this version of the Rolex Sea Dweller if you're in the market. You really are not going to go wrong. I think it's a super strong buy and I have nothing but good things to say about it. Even though the bracelet is, you know, not as nice as, as the new versions, that's just kind of part of the charm as far as wearing a vintage watch. And I think we're definitely into that with this one, you know, 15 years old. It's amazing that 2003 is now vintage, but here we are, 2018, life moves on. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning into this episode. I definitely appreciate, as we said, you guys tuning along. Please do hit that like button, leave us a comment, hit subscribe, do all that stuff, you know what to do. 
everybody thank you for tuning in we'll be back soon with another episode